you some of it. Another one, let's slice you up as well. Slicey, slicey, get rid of you. Hello and welcome back. And today I wanna to show you guys just how easy it is to edit video on a 10 GBE NAS. So many of you have these enormous libraries of footage and are looking to edit 1080p, 4K and more using an external solution. There are of course Thunderbolt solutions but only allows one person to connect. And today what I want to show you is using the software Mavavi, I'm going to record this bit of footage here, I'm gonna talk for a few minutes, and then we're gonna edit this in that software, and then we're gonna do two different versions of this edit. The first version, we're going to edit locally on this PC. We're gonna create a local version with a few transitions and effects using that software, and then we're gonna output and time how long the laptop takes using the internal SSD on this laptop. Then we're gonna run exactly the same in code, but with all assets living on a 10 GBE NAS solution. Today's solution, we're gonna be utilizing the Synology DS2419 Plus. It's an Intel Atom-based CPU. It's not exactly earth shattering, and we're gonna be connecting to it over 10 GBE. I can connect directly from the laptop to the NAS via 10 GBE, but just for convenience, I'm gonna be using a 10G switch today. And what we want to work out is one, how much faster is one than the other, and is editing on 10 GBE a viable solution. I think it is, I talk about it on the video, on these videos all the time, and I will be doing another video of editing 4K on a QNAP NAS later on. But today, we're just gonna focus on editing using Mavavi this piece of footage. So I'm gonna talk for a few more minutes. I'm gonna stop the video recording for you guys now, and I'm gonna talk for a little bit further later on just for something that we can edit. Hopefully five minutes of footage that we can chop up and then utilize on this editing suite. So I'll see you on the screen. Right, so here we are on the desktop here and you may have already noticed that we're recording off screen. The reason we are doing it in this way, recording off screen with another camera, is because as much as I would like to use OBS or popular screen recording software, there's no denying that this would massively hamper the results of our editing. So to ensure that the only devices that are gonna be utilized are the NAS or the laptop, we aren't going to be using screen recording software. Maybe in future videos I'll use a capture card, but for now I'm trying to use as little of the system resources as possible, hence the screen recording off camera. So the first thing we're gonna do is do this Mavavi um, edit utilizing files just on the laptop. We aren't going to be utilizing the NAS at all. The first thing we want to do is import files from a local folder. So we're gonna go into my footage folder and we're going to be utilizing this folder I've created here called editing over 10 GBE Mavavi. And if we open up the properties files, you can see it's in my C folder. My C folder, if we go into my computer, is a nice bog standard SSD inside my device. It's a standard SSD. It's again, about um, a 500 gig SSD. It's not anything too special. It's just a normal bog standard SSD you'd find in any laptop or PC system. So we're gonna utilize this folder and use the assets inside this folder. And this folder is made up, if we go into it directly, I can show you that it's made up of the video we made earlier on during the intro, as well as a bunch of other completed files from earlier. There's other bits of junk there of me trying to do swimming and playing with stuff on camera. And this is what we're going to be editing with today. It's imported all of these files into a timeline here, as we can see. Maybe we can add some effects, some other stuff to add here in the background. So if we just chuck some transitions between some of these files, chuck that in there. And again, this is quite an enormous file we've created. It's a 25 minute file here. We don't really wanna make it that long, so let's slice apart some of our footage. Just use some of it. Another one, let's slice you up as well. Slicey, slicey, get rid of you. Get rid of you. We want to maybe create maybe a 10 minute file perhaps. And again, maybe we can move some of these around a little bit. Add some text and quotations and add some stuff there. Just chuck any old stuff. We're not going to do anything too snazzy. We're literally just doing this so we can add some stuff. We're going to maybe do some random over recording of the sound. Again, we're up to about 17 minutes. We don't really want it to be that long. So let's slice apart some of this. Slice, get rid of you. 
maybe move that and kind of chop it all apart. Um, we could apply some effects. We're not going to do too much stuff there. Again, we'll maybe slice up these as some speed tests I did on a QNAP a little while ago. Get rid of some of that. What are we up to? We're up to about 13 minutes. Let's chop this one apart a little bit. That's me inside um, a little room that I record in back in home. Re chop, chop. And again, this isn't anything precise. All I want to do is create a file that we can then use just to create some stuff. Um, again, we'll do another couple of effects, maybe one on some of those. Chuck some stuff there, another effect there. I think we'll slice this up one last time, the one from the earlier today. Get rid of that, get rid of that, move that along there. I think that's doubled up on the sound files a little bit. What are we up to? About 11 minutes, so I think that'll be absolutely fine. So, next thing we want to do is save the project um, so we'll save project as and this project is going to be saved on the local hard drive on the local SSD even so this is project test SSD local gonna save that the file is saved and now we are going to look at that idiots face um, we are now going to produce this file so again we'll save the movie as a media file We'll save this as a bog standard MP4. We'll do it at 1080p. And we're going to save it to the exact same folder that the files are in. It's in there. And now we're going to start the creation of this media file using just the SSDs. And I'm going to fast forward time to when this is completed. there you go the file has been completed it took six minutes and 40 seconds there's our completed file there and what we'll do is we'll play that now just using VLC to, to show that it worked and it is going to be a mishmash of all of those effects that we applied earlier on just gonna fast forward through a little bit some of the stuff that should have been rotated and wasn't some of the transition effects will probably be in there all kinds of weird stuff that we've literally just thrown into here, different effects. There is our completed file. And again, there's me rabbit in there in the background. If we right click it, we can look at the file format. It is an MP4. If we go into details, we can see that it's 1080p. I hope you can see that on screen. So that's an HD file. And again, not massive, but it's about an 11 minute file that we've done in just over six minutes. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move all of these files over to the NAS. I'll show you the right way to set it up. And we're going to run exactly the same test over again with the exact same media file, the same project file, but this time working from a 10GBE NAS. Right, so here we are back on the desktop. And what I've done is moved all of those files we created earlier on to my desktop, as you can see here. The reason I've done that is I don't want them to be in the same file structure they were earlier. I want to make sure that the only thing that's running on my local PC is the Mavavi software. I want all files that it's using to be on the NAS. Any temp or shadow files it creates are also going to be in the wrong directories, so it will have to create brand new files, which is what we want to do. We want to edit exactly the same file, but this time on the NAS that I've got here. Now, in order to do that, we've got to bear in mind two key factors. One, most editing software that you use on PC or Mac will require you to set up a mapped network drive. In the case of Synology, and we will do a video later on for QNAP, you need to use the Synology Assistant software, scan your local area network, and as you can see, it's found the NAS here. This is the same NAS connected via 1GBE and 10GBE. Today we're using the 10GBE. Right click and select Map Network Drive. From here, use the login credentials for the NAS in question, and it's incredibly straightforward to set up a Map Network Drive. The reason I'm not going to show you right now is simply because I've already done it in advance. Once you've set up a Map Network Drive, it will look like this. So you've got your new normal local hard um, SSD and the NAS here as a Map Network Drive. This is a folder on the NAS. The reason you have to do it this way 
is because local software on your PC has to be able to see a simple file structure. Now, in the case of Mavavi, we're going to set it up so that this time Mavavi pulls all the files it needs from the NAS rather than the local SSD. In the case of this NAS, just to emphasize this point, whereas the original uh, video production we used was on a, a single SSD, we're using three hard drives in a RAID 5 environment. 4TB hard drives to be precise, WD Red 4TB hard drives in a RAID 5 environment. Now, hard drives have a read write speed of about 120 megs. The traditional ones, the enterprise ones, can go to about 200 megabytes per second, but these hard drives are typically about 100 to 120 megs each, and there's three of them in a RAID 5 environment versus our local hard drive, uh, local SSD, which was 500 megs a second, give or take. So it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out, because as, as much as a SSD vendor might advertise 500 megabytes per second, typically in day-to-day -day use, it will be between 350 and 450 megabytes per second. And I'm hoping a RAID 5 on these hard drives will mean that this NAS will be able to keep up over 10 GBE. So, now we've created our RAID 5 in advance, and on the shared network drive, I've already uploaded all the files that we're using. The next thing I need to do, of course, is to start the encode. Now, on this mapped network drive we can see here is our project test file that we used for the previous video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click copy, and we're just gonna make another copy of that file. This is the one we're going to use to make sure that it's exactly the same um, effects and files that we used before. If we go into it, the first thing it's going to say is it cannot find the files. And of course it can't because I moved them at the top of the video to ensure that we wouldn't use the same files on the SSD. So in order to do that, what we need to do is click browse and find all of the files. So if we make our way into here, we'll make our way into the mapped network drive and tell it that the files are in here. So the file it's looking for will be in this folder. Again, I didn't catch which folder, which file it was looking for. That was silly, wasn't it? Let's see if it's this one. And as you can see, it is now found all of the files that we were using in our effects. It's pulled all of them directly from that database, but now, all of these files are on the are on the NAS rather than on the local system. If we go for that, double check, file information, same file, right click it again, show in folder, and as you can see, it is all on the mapped network drive. So all, we're going to do exactly the same effect, exactly the same encoding of a video file, but this time with all the files on the NAS. So let's get to it. We're going to click file, same as before. We're going to save movie as a media file as before. This time we're going to call the file project test NAS 10 GBE, but it's going to be exactly the same file, same effect, same quality. Nothing is going to change. We're just going to change the directory that all of these files are going into. So even the finished project is going to be on the NAS. So without further ado, let's see how long this takes. And there we go, it's complete. The file has been finished. Uh, the more astute of you at the top of the video may have noticed a slight error before the encoding began. That was my own fault because you can't have the output and the input file both on the 10 GB now. So the only reason for that error is just because I had to change the destination directory to the local uh, PC. But again, not a huge problem. And the overall encode only took a fraction longer than a local SSD. So again, I do think that does prove that this is just as good to edit over 10 GBE. There's our uh, finished file there. Let's play our finished file, shall we? And have a look and see how that turned out. There's our 
finished file. Let's have a quick look and see how that turned out. It should be absolutely the same. And again, there's me rabbiting on at the beginning. There's the file in the wrong direction. There's that intro there. Maybe we've got the wibbly uh, water effect that we saw earlier. There's the text effect. All the rest of it carrying on. All of the effects that we saw have all been replicated and it's exactly the same file. There's our finished file from before and that weighs in at 1.41 gigabytes and this file here weighs in at 1.41 gigabytes. Exactly the same kind of file edited in two different locations. Same file, there's the time differences between them and again I think that largely proves things. Just before we go, just to prove about the speed difference between the SSDs and the hard drives, what we can do is load up AJA testing, and from here, we're definitely not gonna enable caching. I'm just gonna show you the difference. So there's our C drive there, and the C drive with our SSD, the read write speed of again, around 400 or so write, and around 400 or so read. And if we compare that, even on this brief testing, to the mapped network drive here, same speed test, and again, we're getting the same but a fraction lower in terms of consistent write. And that is going to be the reason why the video took just a fraction longer to edit on 10GBE than locally. But this has been how to edit with Mavavi and the effects of 10GBE editing of a 1080p file. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed this or want to see more videos like this, don't forget to click like and subscribe to support this channel and help me help you. Cheerio. Look at the writing on his hand.